The conversation about the potential legalization of online gambling and mobile gambling here in America has caught a lot of attention in the press. For my part, being owner of a successful company here in Nevada that's moved into gambling, I've been giving a lot of interviews to the national and international press, mostly surrounding a joint venture that we formed with one of the most successful uh, casinos here in Nevada. So, as part of any expansion, you need to raise money. And not too long ago, I found myself seated across the table from one of the most prominent and successful venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. And he astounded me with a statement. He said, I'm not sure if people are ready to gamble their money on their computers and mobile devices. Now, to put that in perspective, the United States currently accounts for nearly 30% of all gambling revenue in the world. We do it with only a smattering of casinos. We do it without online and we do it without mobile. Now the rest of the world generates $25 billion a year in online gambling. And five billion of that is from mobile. So we believe that when the United States opens up, the numbers are gonna be huge. And I'll tell you why. I realized that we weren't dealing with a lack of intelligence at the table, we were dealing with a lack of information. The fact is that my company has been entertaining tens of millions of people with the video games that we create. And for the last three years, we've been working in the gambling industry with some of the titans. And we've learned a lot. It's given me time to step back and think about how a video game company should be approaching gambling. I've come up with some, some basic knowledge, and I'm gonna share some of that today. The first is that 90% of any gambling experience is in anticipation. If you and I decide to settle a bet by flipping a coin, we both stare at that coin as it tumbles through the air and we think about what it's gonna to mean to win and what it's gonna to mean to lose. If I simply called you on the phone and told you what the result of the coin toss was, it would lose all effect. So companies, which are uniquely talented at creating these anticipatory experiences, should be able to capitalize. Well, we will, but we need to be in it for the long haul, and I'll tell you. We are really focused on three key points with our customers. We want customers who are connected. They spend a good deal of their time online. We want customers who are social. They interact with family and friends about things that they like, and hopefully in a way that we can monitor. And lastly, we want them to be mobile because they carry that device with them all day and they conduct those former two points on that device. Now, when you look at the 21 to 45 year olds in America, I think we would say that a good portion of them fit those three points. But when we look at the 15 to 21 year olds in America, almost all of them do. So why are those points important? Well, when you enter a casino, you are being monitored you're being watched, you're being profiled. And some of this is done uh, actively through an opt-in process like a player card in order to build a better experience with you. And some of it is a little more passive because the casinos have an obligation to look for things like money laundering, collusion, cheating, and fraud. <clears throat> we have that same obligation to know our customer. And for us, it's a bonus if we get to know their, their friends as well. Why else do we like that category? Well, those young people drive adoption of new technologies, and they drive innovation. As we look at the adoption of new technologies and new services over the years, the rates are accelerating rapidly. So, <clears throat> I don't want the takeaway here to be that we're going to go after little kids. Nobody wants underage gambling. And as a matter of fact, as my friends will tell you, I'm the first person to freak out when I see an underage kid playing an adult video game. But we do need to look ahead. We need to see what kids are doing now for entertainment, and we need to realize that that's most likely what they're going to be doing as they move into gambling. So we need to know a little bit about who those kids are and who's playing video games. It might surprise you to find out that the average age of a video game player is 30 years. 
These are people with responsibilities. At least they should be, right? <laughs> now, you might have an image of a 30-year-old guy sitting in his mom's basement playing video games. <clears throat> but let's talk about this. 69% of heads of household play video games. So we're talking about a responsible market that, by the way, is divided almost evenly between male and female. We're talking about people who have responsibilities, mortgages, things that they care about in life, and who overwhelmingly have proven that when they get the opportunity, they gamble responsibly. We believe that it's up to us here in Nevada to create a system that can be taken through the entire nation that will ensure that these video gamers are able to enjoy gambling in a responsible and entertaining way. So, are we that smart? Is 3G Studios the only company that's recognized this potential opportunity, this influx of kids that we're going to be getting into the legalized gambling market in the next five, six, seven years? And the things they're going to be looking for? No. Casinos have spent a lot of money to get up to speed on things like social media. They've spent a lot of money to build uh, bars and lounges and nightclubs and, and attract celebrity chefs. The problem is that right now the 20-somethings and the 30-somethings come and enjoy those amenities and then leave without gambling. So we have to take a look at why people gamble to begin with. This one's not going to surprise you. It's money. I said we weren't going to exploit little kids. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> But <clears throat> it's not surprising to find out that the number one reason that people gamble is the opportunity to win money. What's more surprising is the number two reason. Amongst senior gamblers, the number two reason that they gamble is the social experience, which I wouldn't have seen that coming. But it's their opportunity to get out with their friends. For younger gamblers, it's the excitement of winning. It's the excitement of the gambling experience. Well, the problem for casinos is that these younger gamblers can get that experience elsewhere. They can get it at home with their friends. They can get it in big arcades like Dave and & Buster's and Gameworks, which I believe will be the casinos of the future. What we do know about young people, as a side note, is that young people are spending more and more money on what we call experiential spending. That means they're willing to spend more for an experience than for a luxury item. Material goods are actually falling away with younger audiences. Now, this is amazing. The people who spend the most on experiences versus material goods are not only the most balanced and the most fulfilled, but also the most successful, and that I found incredible. So, are we meeting their expectations? You've seen some of the games that are out there, I hope, but are we getting there? Well, <clears throat> I'm a member of both the gambling industry and the video game industry, and I hate to pick a fight between the two, but here goes. You may have had one of these 30 years ago. That's the Atari 2600, beloved console. And if you did, you might have played this game, Pitfall by Activision. And in Pitfall, I could explore the jungle while avoiding dangers and collecting treasures. Fast forward 30 years. This is a game called Far Cry 3 that just came out recently, where I get to explore an island that's like nothing I've ever seen. I run through it, I drive through it, I swim through it, I fly over it, I collect treasure, and I avoid dangers. You want to talk about experiences we'll never have, experiential spending, look at this. Who doesn't want to be that guy? Nathan Drake in Uncharted 3, protecting the world's treasures from the bad guys while riding a horse with a rocket launcher. <laughs> if we want to look for depth, we only have to look as far as the recently released Walking Dead game based on the graphic novel of the same game, or the same name, excuse me. I, yes, this is about the zombie apocalypse, but that's not really the point. I played this on my iPad before bed every night in a brilliant decision. 
Along the way, this is a story-based game where every decision that you make is going to affect the ultimate outcome of the story and how the other players view you. So along the way, you meet a fantastically colorful cast of characters who you have to learn to trust and who have to learn to trust you, or somebody's going to die. Now, that's not the best part. The best part is that we meet Clem. Little Clementine has lost both of her parents, and she's scared out of her mind. And so in a good move, I decide to protect her. Now, Clementine and I are attached at the hip, and every decision I make affects the way that Clementine looks at me as a man. And so I change my behavior based on a virtual little girl. I teach Clementine to protect herself, but she's kidnapped, and I spend a good portion of the game trying to get her back. I do, but I'm bitten by a zombie in the process. And so, in my last moments of the game, I give Clementine all the advice and wisdom that I can, and I send her off into the world. And my character dies, never knowing if little Clementine will be okay. I shut off my iPad, and I thought about my parents and how much they love me. I thought about my little children and how much I love them. And I thought about whether or not I prepared them to survive if my time on Earth should pass suddenly. This is a slot machine 30 years ago, and this is a slot machine today. Are we there yet? Absolutely not. Can we get there? Of course. The fact is that gamblers use more technology than non-gamblers, which is surprising because the most affluent segment of the market who has ready access to technology doesn't gamble. Not only do they use more technology, but they're not scared of it. In fact, they're more enthusiastic about technology than non-gamblers. They want more of this. As a matter of fact, young people have started resorting to pro-gaming tournaments. Now, pro-gaming tournaments, about $1 billion a year changes hands in these. And this is not considered gambling. And the reason it's not considered gambling is because it's skill-based. As a matter of fact, a federal uh, judge just opined that poker is not gambling because the same players keep floating to the top. If you can put the word pro in front of a form of gambling, it's not gambling. So what is? What, what makes up regulated gambling? Well, I'll give you my three R's. First, you have to have something at risk. You have to agree to put something on the table that you could lose that's valuable to you. There has to be randomness, some kind of chance involved that ultimately determines the outcome of your wager. And then there has to be a reward. There has to be something tangible or taxable that you're going to take away if you win. Without all these three things, it's not regulated gambling. For instance, one of the largest pizza chains in America is offering a free pie if you guess the outcome of a coin flip at the Super Bowl. Well, because you haven't risked anything, it's not regulated gambling and it's not against the law. So, if we take a look at this, can you see some randomness happening in this scene that a young person might want to gamble on? Well, besides the bullets, and the rockets, and everything else. See that thing with four legs and a brain? That's a horse, and horses are pretty random, right? We can go places with that. So there's all kinds of opportunities to affect the outcome of this scene using randomness, but in a way that the player feels empowered. I'd like to share some of the things that 3G Studios has been working on for the regulated gambling market. little different than the slot machine, right? So, I believe that this revolution is going to start in Nevada, 
our lawmakers and our regulators are working very hard to make sure that other states can take advantage of taxes from gambling without putting infrastructure in place. But it's also up to us as a responsibility to make sure that we open a dialogue with our kids, that we recognize that we gamble every day through lottery tickets, buying and selling stocks, even passing up a parking space hoping we get one closer to the store. Gambling is going to be part of our kids' lives, and it's up to us to create products and regulation that allows them to enjoy it responsibly as a form of entertainment. Thank you.